yes, it will be, uh, but that is the intent. That could be big enough? No, yeah. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give up my seat for one of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That might need to be Depends there. if you're busy that day. Yeah. <laughs> I, must, I must like know what's going to be presented to the board by then, so. I'll be and so will you actually, you want to like, see most of it. Did you say you had a date? It's the 17th of September, I believe. Um, I need to go on the website and check, but I believe it's generally the third Tuesday, so I think it's the 17th. Yeah, the 17th is a Tuesday. Yeah, so it'll be the 17th of September. I had that on my schedule with my big milestone for when this happened, so yes. Okay, I have the video. Okay. That's very quick. So lights. Do you want to put the lights? Yeah. I just got to put you in first. The red one. Um, Okay. Yeah. Um, don't press play just yet. Okay. <laughs> so, just want to orientate people because this goes by pretty fast, and even I can't talk this fast. Um, so, what you're looking at here is effectively the existing condition. Um, south is to the top right, north is where the existing is. Um, so, right now in this vicinity of Brian, you've got the two existing tracks with the UP right of way. Um, they support the conventional diesel service. Uh, the limited Caltrain service up in the morning, down Gilroy at night, and then the occasional freight train as well. Uh, and then in this location, there's still the four, sorry, the three two lanes on Branham, and then the, the right turn lanes and the, um, off Monterey. So this is sort of just the existing configuration. It runs through essentially what it would look like with the viaduct, which is what we call alternative one and alternative three in this area. That is the viaduct. Uh, alternative two is you'll see we'll drop down into a trench because uh, Branham goes under, so Monterey and Branham go down um, and the rail stays at the current grade. And then the third one is what we call the blending configuration where high speed train, electrified cow train, and UP all exist at grade in the existing corridor and the grade crossings are maintained. Um, but then we can go back to the uh, San Mateo Could one. You add a track or something. Yeah, so it'll be three tracks. Right now, there's two. There's two now, and we will make, we will add, we will rebuild it to three track configuration. So all of what we're seeing would apply to the Bernal Monterey section as well. As yes. Well. Yes. The only difference would be is once you get south of oh, I've lost Hill, Monterey will be down to two lanes, so it's not the narrow Monterey. It stays at two lanes, but especially with alternative two, which we'll look at, things get really tight. Whereas with the, the viaduct. Um, we can tuck the road in underneath it, provides a little bit more space, and the land will be staying in the existing corridor so it doesn't tighten up on any more days. But otherwise, configuration wise, look wise, very simple. Um, I guess I do want to mention that in the next meeting, when we are revealing the preferred alternative, we are highlighting the best performing or um, criteria for each alternative. Yeah. And we'll go through, we have. Basically, we'll have we have I don't know, maybe like 25 different elements, you know, where we can objectively measure how they perform, be it acres, houses displayed, businesses displayed, acres of land, wetlands, whatever else. Um, so we'll have a whole slew of information, and then we've also created like some summary slides, which is just sort of focusing on okay, what works best where. So you can sort of rather have to keep 25 slides in your head is like four slides. That sort of just summarize sort of why we pick the alternatives that we will have picked, um, and then we'll also be going through what are the other. All, all the alternatives will have issues, and so we'll be identifying what issues remain with what alternative, how we can address those to better and lesser extents as well. Will depend, and all that information um, you can miraculously absorb in a couple of hours or so. Um, but we are looking to get this information out hopefully to your uh, representative, so you've got, you know, a few weeks to look at this stuff um, to actually provide input. We'll be focusing on the meetings, but hopefully you'll have that information as well to look out longer. So, and hopefully tonight we can give you a good orientation so you'll know what you want to look at when we come out with the preferred alternative material. Okay, thank you. Okay, so existing condition. The, the library is up there and stuff. So this is alternative one and three divider. So you can see Monterey has been reduced down to two through lanes. We still have the turn pockets, uh, two dedicated tracks on a viaduct in that vicinity, about 50 feet high. Uh, can you, can you stop right there so we can ask for it? You said two lanes on each side. 
Yes. Okay. And, and the turn lane. So we've worked with San Jose. So essentially the turn lane configuration is the same as it is now, but it's reduced down to two through lanes. So like here you can see there's actually a right turn, if you're coming south, there's a right turn lane, two through lanes, and then there's two left turn lanes. And that's all for the southbound traffic. Ah, there we go. So right here, um, this is coming south. So you've got the tracks, you've got the existing, you've got the turn lane, you've got two through lanes, two left turn lanes, and then on the other side, you'll have the two through lanes going north. You only have one left, there's even one lane out then, right? Yeah, one lane. So right now it's three through lanes, so we were just down to two through lanes. But why, I mean, you, already, you only have one left turn lane there anyway, don't you? Right now? This has been worked with, again, when we only have two through lanes, there's going to be more, there's, we need more storage to make that left turn. Oh, okay. These have been worked through with the Traffic Department of Transportation in the city of San Jose of the lane configuration. And the lane configuration is the same for both alternatives one, two, and three, because they all effectively reduce monoway, whereas alternative four, the blended, we don't reduce monoway, so it just stays as it is. You don't use monorail, you said? No, we stay in the railroad corridor. We don't reduce monorail. Will you have a picture of what happens at Burnell South? Because Monterey is seriously behind the curve. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 We yeah. will it only has a K barrier in the center. We will not have a simulation in the document of what happens at Monterey South. We've got a few points up here to show you, so that but line these pretty much have. Distance, these have been. I don't have well, to see a simulation. I want to see. It I won't show a simulation at every single point. You want to see a simulation. No, I know that's not so, important to me. I want to see how you're doing. Yes, to do it. Yes. So with the viaduct, how many homes are present coming down south of Bernal in the Metcalf area? I don't have the analysis numbers with me. I don't have them memorized. But I can tell you, I mean, the viaduct it, it, it affects when we come from Communication Hill into Monterey. Uh, there's a few mainly businesses. Uh, the viaduct stays within the existing footprint of Monterey. It just, um, but the viaduct actually works better because you can tuck Monterey underneath it. Um, when we get into the alternative two, which has the grade separation, that grade, um, I believe, I know that number has the most, I think in this section here it's about 175 units. Oh. That's units, so not buildings, units. How high is that by This one through here. This is about the lower section, so it's about the top of the track here. It's about 45 feet, and we have profiles here where you can actually look at that. Um, how high does the train extend above that? Well, no, the train right, right on those tracks. So the top of the rail is where the train runs. The train itself is about 11, 12 feet high. The wire height is 17 feet above the rail. So there's significant so, growth above that by the height. Is that correct? Am I correct in understanding that? Are you bearing that down into the light? No, so again, the, the train is on the light. It did it. Yeah. So you were talking 60 to 60 plus feet. By so where the wire and the pole is. Yes. yes. And in this neighborhood, it will be considerably higher because this is up at Branham and there's no existing grade separation. So we're essentially we're high enough to allow the cars to go underneath. That's only the height we need to be. Down here, where we've had to go up and over Blossom Hill, then we had to go over 85 and Bernal, we're up to like 85 feet. Yeah. So, yeah, you get a really good view of the train down here. Uh, but yeah, so I want to make sure, so if we, we'll look at the profile. So this is sort of what it looks like, but as you come down to this neighborhood, these columns will be about twice the height. Um, it'll be very high, so it'll be very visible. Um, you know, it'll be, you'll hurt, you'll straighten your neck looking up at it. Um, so it'll be a lot more visible, I would say, from the area, so in some ways less noticeable actually in the higher in the corridor because it's just so high up. But yeah, it will be high. So it's like a nine story building. Yes. What, but what about sound? Yeah, that's the yeah, yeah, yeah. top like Okay. Um, <laughs> so, so I know we're getting all these quite uh, great questions. Tonight what we have in the materials to show you what it looks like and where it is. All the analysis about sound and traffic and all that, that is what we'll be talking about at the community meetings in July. Yeah. So I'm not going to get into the environmental analysis tonight. Now, you're taking out lanes of traffic. Yes. That road is pretty busy as it is now. 
Have you ever uh, seriously tried, tried to drive that race? Sorry, sorry, one 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 so we have one question at a time. <laughs> one question at a time. Has anybody looked at the traffic? Yes, there will be a full traffic study included in the environmental document for all the alternatives. But it makes sense. If it's busy now and you take out a lane, it's not going to get better. It's going to get a hell of a lot worse. Can, can we actually finish the <laughs> other video, the uh, other alternatives, and then maybe we'll turn on the lights yeah. and ask questions? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, if you don't want to answer the question, but No, we, we will answer questions, but um, this is only for alternative one and three. There's two and four, and I want to finish the video and then turn on the lights. Okay. Yeah. Gary, real quick question. I, I just noticed and I've forgotten though. That one and three meaning that that this is the same on both of those alternatives, but yeah, so other places there's different. Yeah, alternatives okay. one and three in this location look the same. So really okay. there's only three choices here. We have four end to end to simplify how we present it in the document. Okay. But here one and three are exactly the same. Right. Two is different and four is different. Okay. Okay, okay. so two is next. So this here is, you can see, you've got, this is the existing Union Pacific Pacific. So, we can yeah, right. so you've got the existing Union Pacific tracks where they were, the high-speed train, two dedicated high-speed train tracks at the same profile elevation as the existing freight tracks. This is a dedicated guideway. So Monterey, which you can sort of see in the trench back there, has been reduced down. Again, those two lanes have been removed to make sufficient space to squeeze the high-speed train in. Um, but this is the dedicated, so we're going at a higher speed. We have the intrusion barrier uh, to prevent errant freight vehicles getting in and interfering with the high speed train. And then, because of the speeds that we're going at here, uh, excess of 125 means we have to be grade separated. So, both Monterey is coming down and Branham is coming down to have a depressed, so essentially, what's up at surface level now will be sunk down 30 feet. Okay, so for Brett, for. Uh... Bailey now, what will that look like? Well, Bailey is Bailey. an overcrossing we go underneath Bailey. We go underneath Bailey. Bailey is already, already grade separated, elevated over Monterey. And we've got some maps. We'll look at the maps closely and then we can point at the specifics. <clears throat> so that's not going to be nine feet, I mean, nine stories in the air. No, by that time we've come back down. By Bailey, we're back on the ground. Well, sorry. Depending on, sorry, I'm sorry, depending on which alternative you're talking about. And this one? This one is alternative two. This doesn't go on a big viaduct. This is on the ground. It's on the ground. Right. Okay. So it's never 90 feet up to the air. They sink everything else around. Yeah, okay. So okay. That's, so okay. it seems so, like it's yeah. really not. Yeah. And then the walkway for people is going over. Yeah. Is that the walkway going over? Yeah, good this, point, yes. And this, how high up in the air, air is that? I mean, this is going to have to clear a high-speed train. We are looking for a clearance to the underside of this structure of 27 feet. Probably similar to so Crossing. So this would yeah. be about, the actual way you would walk would be about 35 <coughs> feet above the existing tracks. But Amy brought up a good point in the last meeting that this is an issue on accessibility, so that's something you keep in mind on the turn of two. Okay. Yeah. So let's, can I move up to four? The last one, and then we'll look at specific street crossing. Um, So this one, um, much less construction happening. The Monterey Road itself is as it is right now. Um, the rail corridor is rebuilt to fit three tracks. The two electrified tracks will be on the uh, west side, um, away, and then the freight track is the one closest to Monterey. Um, the corridor will be electrified for the two tracks. The third track, uh, Union Pacific doesn't want that limited by overhead wires, so the wires will only be over the two electrified tracks. But what the corridor will have is it will have full access control fencing, um, to, you know, it's eight feet. Um, typically our standard, our standard access control fencing is sort of close mesh chain link fence with three strand barbed wire on the top. Um, you know, in urban areas, that may not be the appropriate thing to use, and we can work that through sort of through our design uh, aesthetics and everything else. But that's the standard. We really don't want people getting in there. Um, and then each of the grade crossings, they will remain. Um, but this is they will be upgraded. So as a train comes through, you'll have barrier arms across all four approaching or departing directions, and also barriers across the sidewalks. So as the train comes through, before the train comes through, all these barriers are closed, 
So as the train comes through, you effectively have a continuous barrier as the train comes through. Gary, what is the projection? Number of trains per hour, peak hour, total um, for Caltrain with the upgrade, and high-speed rail, how many trains I should ask hour? you, John, see if you remember, but I'll answer that question, don't worry. <laughs> so, I'll give it in two levels. When we initiate service, which is the Valley to Valley service, um, that is programmed at two trains per hour per direction in the peak, and one train per hour per direction in the off-peak. When we get to full phase one, which means we have the LA to San Francisco connection, our ridership is projecting a need for up to trade, sorry, for up to eight trains per hour per direction in the peak, down to four trains per hour per direction in the off-peak. And that's based on the ridership projection. You know, we pretty much run the what, what number of trains to run them as close to capacity as we can while maintaining the necessary. That's just high speed rail that doesn't have Caltrain. Correct. So, so Caltrain every four minutes, If they are completely evenly distributed, yes. So be continuous noise. Well, no, because the trains go by where they are quite quickly. But, but that's a good point. <laughs> right now, this alternative forward looks like the pros and cons, real quick, looks like the least expensive. And that's um, that assessment. Okay, the pro. Is you got your three lanes of monorail, so there's no concern about a traffic report being a big concern. But the negative I would think for you guys is that train cannot go 125 miles an hour when you're correct. You it's rails. limited to 110 miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you're going 110 miles an hour with those things. How about with the biodex? Are you going faster? It varies 125 to 185. Oh, oh okay. Because I knew it was significantly slower. But I thought it was a lot less than 110. Okay. So what about the drawbacks? The constant gates. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Plus, we got all the yeah, hold on. Hold on. I don't want to listen to three questions at once. Amy, let's go first. I just wondered how you would control, because the gates are going to be going down every approximately four minutes. So how are you going to control traffic through there if you yeah. don't depress or do something the, in that area? The road signals will be interlocked with the train signal. Right, but if it's good. If you have a barrier going down every four to ten minutes, let's say, yep. how yep. will they ever get through those traffic signals? That's only a few cars per minute. How, right? how long does it take for the? How long would the barrier be? Hold on. Look, well, it relates to this question. How long are the barriers up for? Well, how long does it take for the train to pass and the barrier to go back down? How long does it take over 110 miles? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay. It's a few seconds. I mean, it's not like a freight train that's going very slowly. They go by. Um, if we get to uh, San Mateo simulation, you can get your stopwatch out and time it. That is actually running at 110 in that okay. video. It's about four or five seconds. Gary, did you say how many Caltrain on top? No, I haven't answered that. Answer. I mean, Amy, I don't have all those numbers for you, but that is in the traffic analysis that will be in the document. And there's a big, thick traffic analysis appendices that goes with the document that has all those numbers in it. Um, sorry, John, what was that question again? On top of the Caltrain. Caltrain. So, Caltrain is doing their own business planning right now. Right. This alternative will electrify the corridor, which will accommodate future electrified Caltrain service down to Gilroy. How many trains they run in that configuration is to be determined on their business planning. I think they're looking you know, at, I'll just say I haven't been, far, been too busy on high-speed train. Um, I know they were looking for an elevated number of trains, at least to Blossom Hill, and then dropping off south of Blossom Hill, um, potentially turning trains. I think they're looking at combinations of, in this area, I don't know, it's generally been focused more north. Um, I don't know, honestly, what scenarios they have for the number of trains coming south. What our document will do right now, because they haven't made that decision, is based on the existing Caltrain service right now. I can answer for you. That's not accurate. It is a, it's well, the best number that we have right now. We do a traffic report. When, okay, hold on. It is accurate. When Caltrain, if they increase their service south of Tamian, they will have to go through an environmental clearance process as well. They will be standing here. They will have all those numbers, and they'll be telling you what they're trained. I, they're going to do. I, I understand that. I understand traffic reports. But for you guys to do a traffic report, you need to have an agreement with Caltrain that they are going to go at the same time or something like that because if they're do, you're doing your things every four minutes and they do even you know their things every you know 15 minutes, so there has to be an agreement when you do your traffic study when you come to the neighborhood. Yeah. We're not that stupid to say, well, 
you know, I you gotta do okay. you have to have coordination and we are yes. our modeling of our trains includes modeling all the Caltrain trains as well. Yes. But it's a agreement of timing. That's what I'm talking about. It is, about. it includes oh, yeah. the timing when those trains run, we have stream diagrams, when okay. those trains run. We have all that information. What I'm saying is we are only right now in this section model doing that modeling and that integration with the existing Caltrain service not reflecting what they may implement through their business plan. And John brings up a good point about the business plan, is that they're closer at analyzing the, the time of these trains, so if you want to look at they're not, they're closer at getting those numbers down than we are, um, so they have, have a better idea of those numbers. And I can get the business plan update to you guys too. Will, will the traffic analysis include the traffic on the Monterey Highway, or is that being done as a separate? On the Monterey Highway and across streets, and many key intersections surrounding the area as well. And, uh, and you are aware that we have a phenomenon now, you know, we're sort of fighting, we're trying to get to the same end point at the same time, the same successful thing, so we can get people on the trains and off of the roads, but the roads are winning the battle right now. And so we have traffic that has moved from 101 to Monterey, to Santa Teresa Boulevard, to back roads in the Mormonville area. And so we're seeing a phenomenon where cars are constantly trying to move to the best pathway, making you know, more cross traffic here, such as at Bailey coming over to Santa Teresa. And, stuff. and so when will that um, traffic analysis be done? What's the time frame? That traffic analysis is going through the review right now, and it will come out when we release the environmental document, which is currently scheduled for December. This year. What, but what spot in time is it working against? Are you constantly updating? Okay, so, so we did, we updated our traffic, existing traffic counts back, it would have been when we started, so that would be in, well, actually there's two things. The majority of it was done in 2016. However, the traffic counts for this alternative, the Agri Blended, which was only introduced last year, we did the traffic counts for those before schools broke up last May. Well, I would tell you by the time you get to implementation, it's going to be vastly different. Well, that's why traffic modeling is a science into itself. It all gets validated. So, and we have projections, so it looks at the existing condition. Okay, so it does we will, in this section, because of Monterey is going to, you know, for the construction period is going to be a challenge as well. We are actually looking at what we call a 2029, which is like the construction period, and then 2040 on project completion. It's similar to the traffic that you hear on the bottom. I want to look at time. What about this 50 minutes to 9? Do we want to spend more time on the maps? Or are we almost done with these? I just well, want to give a lot of one quick question. Right? Yes, the alternative two, when you went underneath, did it have three lanes on the um, monitoring? No, it had two through lanes. Well, why would you? I, I don't see why you would lose it, but it's actually more efficient. Because, to have because two when you have to have two way. dedicated high speed train tracks, there is not sufficient space on Monterey. And also, the city of Monterey, back in their vision 2040. City of Santa Fe. Oh, sorry, Santa Fe. sorry, thank you. Sorry, you I don't know why I had Monterey in my head. <laughs> oh, I, I do actually do know why, but that was <laughs> The city of San Jose, in their vision 2040, proposed reducing Monterey down to two lanes. <laughs> Okay. For exactly the reason you're saying, we can't chase.